to Mac Connections, the podcast. Keeping connected and looking after yourselves is so important during these changing times. We trust the following conversation will provide some helpful guidance. If you have any concerns, please get in contact with staff in the Year 12 team. We want to be able to provide all the support we can. Our patron, St Mary of the Cross MacKillop, wrote in 1875, May God bless and keep you and give you courage. We acknowledge the traditional owners of the land on which this podcast is recorded. We pay our respects to their elders, past and present, and to the Aboriginal elders emerging. Episode 13. MacKillop Old Collegian and Federal Member for Lawla, a member of the Australian Parliament, Joanne Ryan. Here is your host, Director of Wellbeing, Mr Andrew Exton. Welcome to another episode of Mac Connections, the podcast for the MacKillop College community in terms of looking at this very unusual period of remote learning. And we've gone a little bit outside of our immediate MacKillop family today, and we've got Joanne Ryan, the member for Lawler, with us today. Joanne, thanks very much for being involved. I just want to ask you the first question, and I suppose this podcast is about being hopeful and being future focused, and I think all politicians ultimately are all about the future and improving the future. For you as a, as, a, as a political representative in these tumultuous times, I'm wondering what have the challenges been, but also probably more important, what have you seen as the things that you've achieved or what you feel like you've benefited from during this period? Okay, Andrew. So, um, first of all, a big hello to everyone who's listening or going to listen uh, to the podcast and a thanks for the invitation to join the McKillop family today. Obviously, um, I have strong roots that go back having been educated at McKillop myself. So, oh, look, everything we say at the moment is prefaced by the extraordinary time. Um, everything's prefaced by the fact that there is no roadmap Um in sort of living memory of of how we manage um, things like this pandemic. But there are some positives. Um, There are definitely some positives. The fact that we live uh, in a world with the technology available to keep us connected um, while we're isolated, if you like, is one of the pluses that they certainly didn't have um, with the Spanish flu way back when. So... The positives is that we have the capacity to stay connected with one another and and to minimise that feeling of isolation, and today's a demonstration of that. The challenge, particularly for us locally, has been enormous on multiple levels in terms of having this time through had community transmission alive in our community. Um, That's certainly been a challenge for, for us all personally in our own lives, but also a challenge for us broadly in terms of our our reputation. And, of course, all of us in Wyndham and in Werribee in particular, are, are, we jealously protect um, that reputation in the broader community. So those things have been challenging. On personal levels for everyone, I can't think of anything quite as challenging as uh, the remote learning, if you like. Uh, one well, of the challenges of that's been, and one of those challenges has been people understanding that there are still teachers involved in this process and that those personal relationships between teachers and students and students and students are are what carry a lot of our learning in our classrooms and that this isn't homeschooling. It is remote learning and teachers are still very much engaged in these processes Um, and the community learning to um, have faith that our teachers and our schools are able to reach out to that broad community and to each individual student and family um, and make a difference. The thing I'm proudest of, of of our community across this, Andrew, is exactly that. It's been the way our community leaders, that being our principals, our teachers, um, the president at the local football club, the coach of the basketball or the netball team, the way they've adopted a social media presence, if you like, and we've still had those strong, responsible, caring voices reaching out into our community. That's what I'm, I'm most proud of. Joanne, you mentioned um, this second wave, and I think one of the questions I wanted to ask you was very quickly during this second wave, 
people were defined as postcodes with regards to the amount of active cases that there were. And I think it's not, it's not too much of a stretch to sort of say that where there's active cases, there's an association with what people are doing wrong or how they might not be behaving correctly. Yeah. And it forgets that these are individual people trying to go about their lives every day, doing the best they can and working. Has that did that frustrate you? And I suppose in the midst of, you know, seeing your local area being defined as a postcode, what things have you seen within the community that have really, I suppose, inspired you or uplifted you with regards to the way that the community has addressed those challenges, particularly a, a very multilingual, multiracial community that is benefiting from all those things, but at the same time, right now, it's challenging. Yeah, that, I think it's the the absolute pertinent point to make at this time, Andrew, that there have been, and you know, I'll point the finger directly, there have been certain people in the media who have almost pursued our community um, to have us lifted onto the front pages, if you like. If you're watching the, the um, if you've been watching like most Victorians have, the daily press conferences, um, you could probably identify particular journalists who seemed uh, to raise the issue of particular postcodes and wondering why we weren't in lockdown before we were. There are a couple of things I'd say about that. One is that, uh, yeah, we're defined by postcode, but with that postcode doesn't come the actual numbers. And we are a huge city of 275,000 people. Uh, and so uh, getting that across to journalists when you're talking to them has been one of my challenges to say, you know, postcode 3029 actually has 100,000 people who live within it, which is a very, you know... It, that's a lot of people and that's not always postcodes aren't defined by numbers uh, they're defined by geography so um, that's been a challenge the other part of that challenge has been and one thing that I had confidence in and that is the way as a local community we, we wrap our arms around one another and agree on certain things and one of those things has been that we refuse to be defined that way and that's been really strong coming through social media challenges and conversations with people. One of the other challenges, as you say, has been around the blaming. You know, people looking to blame. Where the whole, you know, the whole of Melbourne CBD is going into lockdown and then pointing the finger. Bluntly, Andrew, it's a simple thing. Some people have the privilege of being able to work from home and not lose a cent in their income. Others have lost their jobs. Others are on JobKeeper. Others are on job seeker, and our community at the heart of this, uh, we have 30% of our population who are actually in insecure work. That means they're working shift to shift. And the choices you make in the world are different if that's your life. And not coincidentally, those people are more likely to be on the front lines, unable to work from home and have to go out to work every day. We need them to go out to work. Um, so they're exposed and their families are exposed. So driving that message and making sure people understand that as, is part of my role. Equally, you know, we've got cases in aged care facilities locally and equally um, that workforce are expected to show up to work. We need them to show up to work to care for the people we love and we need to understand that that means that they take a risk. So in our community... I would say and do say, if anybody asks me, it's as much about people actually being on the front line as it is about people doing the wrong thing. And I would reject the notion that broadly across our community we're doing the wrong thing. The numbers actually reflect the number of people we have working in retail, in transport and logistics, in aged care, in childcare where, and in healthcare where we've asked them to be at work every day and in doing so they take a risk. Now, Joe, I think... Um... One of the things that's amused me as a consumer of uh, politics and media is how our politicians have fumbled with um, technology just as much as we have in the community. And um, particularly looking at snippets from the House of Lords in England as to how they stumbled their way through the use of technology and the, and the possibility of, you know, voting remotely and that sort of stuff. I mean, your work is tactile human content contact most of the time yeah. and it would seem to me that in a lot of ways most of your work has almost been taken away from you because of the fact that you haven't been able to meet people and, and visit and those things so how have you adjusted first of all and I'm wondering from a perspective of your life 
whether there's any aspect of Canberra and Parliament House that you've missed during this period. So to, uh, we see our roles in three parts. You know, there's, there's your work in the community, there's your work in Parliament, um, and then there's your policy work that happens inside inside your caucus. So if you see it in those three parts, I love those three parts equally, if that's possible. I love meeting people in our community. It's an honour and a privilege to be able to, you know, I grew up here, so I would have thought that I knew I knew lots about our our community, but becoming um, a member of parliament, uh, you'd be amazed how deep the dive is into that community from small community groups that are 15 people strong to large sporting associations. I love those bits. Love Canberra. Absolutely love the parliament. Absolutely respect the parliament. And so far, haven't missed a week of parliament. Um, being a whip has given me a need to be there and feeling like you're being really useful when you are. On Monday, Parliament will sit without me. And that will be the first time I haven't been there since this began. And we will trial a remote Parliament for the Australian Parliament for the first time. Not for voting, though, Andrew, of which I'm yep. very defensive about the fact that a Parliament should have physical people actually fronting up and standing and saying this is the way they're going to vote. So Monday, we start the notion that um, I could video in to the... House of Representatives across the next week and deliver a speech from my office in Werribee. Um, so that will be interesting. That'll be challenging going through the machinations of that. Um, and any of the young people who are listening who have ever been to my SRC forum timing those 90 second statements will know that we're grappling with there won't be a clock. We'll need to set up our own clock so we know when yep. when our time starts and finishes and all of those sorts of of practical things. I'll be working in my office, continuing with my whip duties, assisting, making sure that um, that we've got speakers on the floor at the right time, that they know when they're coming on and trying to assist people through the processes of, of doing this remotely. So you'll see the Australian parliamentarians struggling with exactly what you're seeing in the House of Lords other than the voting. The How have we reached out, I think, Part of the things that we've done is, well, what I did from the from the outset of going into the first lockdown was acknowledge that we needed to be, as parliamentarians, to use our social media channels the same way I was asking other people to do so. So I wrote to every community group, every school, um, to the aged care centres, to the childcare centres, um, and encouraged people to adopt a social media presence because I knew we needed those strong, caring, compassionate, reasonable, sensible voices to support people through it um, and took the same approach myself. So my approach on my social media pages was to be where you could get reliable information, to become the place you could go to get the rules, to ask questions, to get assistance. And that's meant hours and hours and hours on social media. So sitting, <laughs> sitting with my iPad, answering questions on Facebook. Yep. So finally, Joe, as an educator and as a politician that makes decisions about or has an impact in the decision making around ATARs and future education and tertiary options and places. I want this to be something that's future focused and positively focused for our young people. What would you say to, first of all, the 220 odd Year 12 students at MacKillop and probably the 1,000 to 3,000 to 4,000 across the electorate of Lawler. What would you say to them about their sense of future? And I think that unending optimism that we've all had through each generation of Australian society from the time of our parents, that each society is going to be better off than the last and have more opportunities than the previous. What would you say to them bearing in mind we live in a time where it would be very easy to think there's not a lot of positives about what they're doing? So the first thing I'd say is 2020 is going to be a year that in lots of ways we'd rather forget, but it's still the year that people are going to graduate and people are going to finish school and people are going to start uni the following year and people are going to get a job and those things are going to happen. It's... Um, it's really important that we stay focused on, on the positive and that we we know that, that well, 
we've we're part of a Victoria that's pulling together to overcome things and we're watching day by day as we get a handle on the virus again and start reducing and we've started to reduce those numbers and hopefully um, a lot of the learning that we've done about this virus and about the way to treat such a contagious threat that those think those lessons are learned. We've also learnt to draw deep and apply the things we know. And I know I'm talking to you, Andrew, and I know as an educator that you will have done this. The fact that we can't be together in a classroom doesn't mean that we don't know one another and doesn't mean we know nothing about what we're doing. We know lots about what we're doing. We know lots about the way kids learn. We know lots about each individual um, student in our classroom. And I am watching friends who are teachers, obviously having spent so long teaching, I have a lot of friends who are teachers, and I've been busy in conversations with them and been absolutely in awe of the adaptability, the optimism and their approach, absolutely fresh approach to the way they're doing things and using technology to support that. So to the, to the young people who are um, in their last year of, of school this year, whether that be in VCAL or in, in VCE, I'd say this, that motivating yourself from home in, in an isolated way is I would think more difficult than having your peers around you every day to knock off your self-indulgence by tormenting you or by supporting you by being compassionate and caring there are all sorts of ways we we work together in a classroom and they will be missed they will be missed there's there's absolutely no way you can replace that but by the same token there will be a lot done in the background to support you through the, the next few months and these processes. And ultimately, there's two fundamentals that don't change. Most of us can cite our ATAR score from the past. Mine predates ATAR, but I could still tell you what my score was. But when was the last time it had meaning in my life? Two months after I started university. And you've got to keep, your, you've got to keep that in mind. It is not a judgment of you or who you are, and it won't be a judgment of this year, and it won't be a judgment of every student in Victoria. We can find ways to make sure that you get a fair go beyond this, and we will. That's what I'm going to tell you. And the minute you're working or pursuing further study outside of this last year, the page turns, and you rarely look back. You rarely look back. So get what you need to get what you need i know how hard our schools have worked to make sure students have access to computers and the things that they need to get through this things are going to be different but things are different every year and you pretty much only do year 12 once so it doesn't matter how we did it last year and it doesn't matter how we do it next year we're doing it this way this year you know if i go back you know once upon a time to sit an exam you had to go into the exhibition buildings you know, and 3,000 students sat in one room and did exams. It's a long, long time ago, but people thought that was the only way you could do Year 12 exams. So we've varied those things across time. This is just, this is just your year, and it's a special year in that sense. The other things I'd say, stay in touch with your teachers. And, you know, I, I was talking to a teacher this morning who told me that the Year 12s, her Year 12s were very reluctant to come um, onto the, onto the well, we're using Zoom today, so let's use Zoom as an example, uh, weren't keen to have their faces on the video and she felt that that meant that they were missing one another's um, facial expressions and those sorts of things. And my quick response was, what time is the class? Maybe they're just not, they haven't brushed their teeth and brushed their hair like lots of us aren't when we're working from home. But get on that video. Engage as much as you can engage. The conversations that you have with your peers in the classroom and your teachers, you, that, that's the best learning place there is, where you challenge one another's ideas um, and, and expand on one another's ideas. That's where the learning happens. We know we're missing it, but it's up to you guys how much you engage in that. Well, Joe, with that, thank you for reaching out and, um, and having this bit of time with us and we wish I think if we boil it down at the moment, we wish each individual and each individual's families all the best, no matter Absolutely. where we are or what we're doing. So with that, thank you so much for um, offering those opinions and those thoughts. And 
thanks for your continued support and um, advocacy for our community. And uh, we look forward to, to meeting you at other venues and other opportunities in the future and, and take care. And thanks, Andrew, for thinking of a creative way to keep in touch with the community. Thanks very much. No worries. Thank you, Joe. That brings us to the end of this episode. A reminder, if you do need any help, if you have any queries, questions or concerns, please contact a member of the Year 12 team. Be kind and look after yourself.